Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I've been called out to a customer's house because they got a leak coming through the ceiling. So they got a nice bullet hole straight through their ceiling. And what we're gonna do is try and find out and see what's causing it. Now I have been upstairs, but everything looks okay on surface. It's mainly tiled in with carandine flooring. So I don't really wanna do any damage up there at the moment. And as there is a hole, what I'm thinking of doing is just sticking the inspection camera up and having a look to see if there's anything obvious. Hopefully there should be seeing some pipes with some signs of leak. And the camera we're gonna be using is the Rigid 350. And we'll just turn the light on. So we might be able to see a bit better with that. And because it's got a nice small end on it, we can just poke it up through the hole and virtually straight away, we can see a compression fitting that has got signs of leaking on it. So I don't think we've got any option, but to cut a patch out of here, we have a joist, which is roughly here, as well as one about there. So we'll probably just cut a square out and hopefully it comes out in one piece. So then we can just stick some wood in, put that patch back up, screw it all up, and it's just a fill and paint. And there's our leak. We've got two plastic fittings going into a compression T. Uh, so yeah, what we're gonna have to probably do is cut it either side and connect it up properly, replace that T for either something soldered or press. And I'm just debating on whether to do the one behind it as well, as I don't want to fix this one and then patch up all the ceiling and then find that three months later, that one goes because it's the same connection. So I can only assume that this is heating pipe work as we have flow directions marked either side of it. So this is gonna be a full drain down. So we'll turn the boiler off, fit a hose pipe on a radiator somewhere, open it up, get the water out, vent it, drop all the water out from above us, and then we should be able to go ahead and start undoing these compression fittings and seeing how much water we have. So let's put you down and let's get plumbing. So let's start with turning off the boiler and we have a Worcester and it's a pressurized system. So we should be able to just do that. Perfect. And to fill them back up again, we've got the old trusty pull down. So start with the top radiator. And we should be able to now open up some bedroom radiators. Lovely. So now it's just a waiting game. We'll wait for the water to stop coming out of our hose and then we'll start disconnecting up top. And I just put my foldable tub from the blower up on here just to catch any drips.
So I just removed all those clips because they were just in the way and too close to the actual timbers. And they do want to sit a little bit further away, especially this one. For this one to relax a little bit, it's this far off, not all the way over here. So probably gonna cut this one back, fit two new poly sockets either side of the plastic, and then couple up with a T. I'm just waiting for this fitting to stop dripping. As lo and behold, on heating, this always happens. So I've got probably no option but to solder it, but either wait for that to drip, or we might end up stealing that and using that to be able to get this done as a press fitting just pushes far over. So yeah, I can't do that. So with this one still dripping, let's go ahead and disconnect this T. So with that socket soldered, what my thought pattern was, was to make the pipe longer so I can actually press it as we've got constant water in it. If I go to try and solder some T's up in place, especially that one, it's probably not gonna work. It's gonna be really hard to get this water out. So what I'm thinking of doing now is literally I can get a press fitting onto here. I can cut these plastic pipes back, fit some push fit connectors on, which is the right sort of connection instead of going into compression in my head. And then yeah, just couple it all up and that should be good.
pretty happy with that. So we've got proper connections onto the poly and then we pressed up the T's with a solder connection. That was just making it easier to deal with the water as I was able to prop it up out the way, solder that and then carry on and press it. So yeah, pretty good. So let's do everything in reverse. So we're just gonna shut off the drain point, shut off all the air vents, top the pressure up and check the leaks. And just topping the pressure back up. And we'll leave it about there. And turn the ball around. And just make sure that the magnet is purged. Yeah, boy. What are you doing then, bro? Yeah, give me some heat. Let's go. So that's the boiler on, so we'll just wait for everything to all get hot. And we'll just come underneath here and check for leaks as everything looks good. So we're gonna leave the hatch up for a little bit and then the owner said he's gonna get somebody to come and unpack it all good, but it should be a nice, easy fix. So if you liked today's video, please give it a like, drop a comment down below, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you on the next one.